Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Best Damn Sports Show in Franklin County for Wednesday, August 26, 2020. I'm the Nighthawk, along with our studio engineer, Mr. Alan Richie Cunningham. And uh, I'm sorry, where's Richie coming from? Happy Days. Don't you uh, remember the show? Not a, I mean, I know there was a show on Nothing I Ever Watched. Played by Ronnie Howard. Okay, I obviously know Ronnie okay. Howard. So, let me get back on track here on the panel. My good friend, Mr. Duke hey, Forrest, as we sit here on a lovely autumn day, 64 degrees. Yeah, Burlington um, High is 69. I was out in the kingdom. It was brilliant. I had, uh, I had my, in fact, Northwest Access Are you TV close enough to your mic, Blue Duke? Hoodie on. Yeah, you might so. want to pull your mic over. Yeah, yeah I had my... Uh, NWA TV hoodie hoodie on today, and I had it on pretty much all day. Yeah, didn't even swim in probably seventy degree water. Okay, just it was pretty pretty cool. Very windy. Yeah, yeah, it's been extremely a ton windy. of rain. We had a did you get a? Uh, we left here. Ian and I left here at about a ten yesterday morning. A lot of rain out there. Yeah, I'm not no. In fact, I, even I, some I, more rain yeah, last night. I'm not sure how much. So, no. anyways, we'll start the show. And the big news today is the NBA playoff games tonight. Let me get my paperwork. I, I just heard a little bit of that. Order. I said, boy, I'm sure Nighthawks just thrilled, yeah. thrilled with that news. Um, three playoff games tonight. Orlando, why well, I say at Milwaukee, but it's of course all down in Orlando at Disney World, playing yeah. in the bubble. Orlando at Milwaukee, Oklahoma City at Houston, Portland at the L.A. Lakers. And the results of these three games is postponed, postponed, and postponed due so. to the shooting of uh, uh, Jacob Blake in Kenosha, Wisconsin, yeah. and isn't it great that they wait until all the facts are out there before they do? And again, I'm hardly on top of this. Wouldn't, wouldn't you say a quick lens that doesn't look real good here from a police point of view, or would you not say anything? I would say they told him to stop numerous times. He's got a rap sheet longer than my arm, including some gun mm. issues, yeah. assaults, and he bent over and the policeman thought he could have been grabbing a firearm <laughs> after numerous times to tell him to stop. Yeah. And this policeman's life was in fear. And, you know, the first thing you have to do, whether you're guilty or innocent, when a policeman tells you to stop, you stop. Now, if you feel like you have legal action against him, fine. Get a lawyer and sue the heck out of the let, let me let me take you back to where this all goes. What about Minneapolis? You're going to tell me the cops look like they they did what they should have done in Minneapolis with the shooting, the the, the fatal shooting that got all this going. The the cop on the guy's neck oh, for well, you're going to tell me you, that. Well, did you ever see the full video of this? Other I than suspect, the fact, I, I suspect I've, I've seen, seen it. the I'll full just video. Just say a quick lens. That didn't look too good. He was for having police. medical. Oh right. I mean, eight, their, eight their minutes? procedures were wrong. I mean, you shouldn't be kneeling. But okay. if you saw the full video, he was having medical issues prior to that, yeah. and the police failed. You know, with that many cops, they, they didn't need to go to that extreme to restrain them. But um, so, but anyway, let me just tell you this too with the NBA: their ratings are in the dumpster. Okay, because people who watch sports like me. And like numerous friends I have, we watch it to get. A, we love sports, but we watch it to get away from the real world. Now, and, and you uh, and you realize and, and understand that's. A, I'm not criticizing yeah. what you like. I realize that that's what you're hoping for from now on. That horse is long, long gone. Okay. Obviously, you'll never ever get that again. Um, and or maybe you disagree with that. You can, and fortunately, as much as I that. love to disagree with you, you may be yeah, that, correct. So that horse is gone. Because I will watch X number of minutes a day on politics, X number of days in sports. Yeah. But uh, I don't want to mix them. Now, the Celtics play tomorrow night, and they're in conversation whether to boycott the game 
Yeah, well, Milwaukee right. got it going, obviously, with the, again, the, the situation in Kenosha, as you said. I guess, I mean, Bucks, Bucks didn't come out of the locker room. Orlando was already practicing, I guess, ready for the, wasn't that a 4 o'clock dip-off? And the Bucks didn't even come out of the, because I'm listening yeah. to you, this on radio for the last hour. And then I heard, well, it looks like the other schedule games tonight, they're going to bag yeah. them, too. I, so at this point, just indefinite, all we know is they're not playing yeah. tonight. Indefinite, good word, but if I was willing to pull my wallet out and yeah. make a bet the Celts play tomorrow night, my answer would be no. Huh. Um, Your answer would be no. No. Yeah, I wouldn't think so right either. before I left. Are we going to see? Are these games going to even come back? That's a good question, Duke. That's why I have you on the panel. Adrian, you can help me with a uh, pronunciation. Wojnowski, that's a tough right. name. Woj. He, he, Woj. Woj. From ESPN. Yeah. Guy probably around our age, just a real solid, pretty good guy. Yeah. Um, he spoke with a unnamed <clears throat> NBA source, saying this could put the season in jeopardy. Yeah, I mean I, that's what I would think right right away. And our good friend LeBron James, who probably my least favorite person in the whole, yeah. he said, and I quote, "Real educated." Terms and I didn't write it down, so I'm not going to quote them correctly. Yeah. F this situation, whatever you know. Mean, uh, meaning, why are we playing games when yeah, all this I other mean, stuff's going yeah, on? Yeah, uh, yeah. I wouldn't. Boy, I, I would. Yeah. At this again, I'm just picking up on this literally yeah. in the last yeah. uh, hour. I'd give yeah. a resumption of the season at quick glance, probably no more than fifty-fifty right now, yep. and that might be high. Yep, I agree. But uh, you know, Listen. I'm not sitting here. Exposing that I'm the smartest guy in the world, but uh, no when me, stuff like obviously. this occur, why going to a car dealership and smashing all the windows out, oh, breaking into a Starbucks? You know, sure. Whoa, I, oh, sure. Believe me, anybody. I we have very different yeah. feelings on a lot of this. Yeah, if you have, if you think I have the slightest bit of sympathy for looters, I certainly yeah. don't. These folks should be figuratively hung, and you know, I, I, well, no reason to get into politics right. too. And that's you know who this is probably helping is your, your guy. You're stealing the words right out of my mouth. Right. And any, any for for just uh, people out there, any Biden people, if you think, and I hate to think you thought this, if you think this election's uh, over and Biden wins, uh, yeah, this whole stuff could be Duke, absolutely changing. I, well, and I'm hardly the you, you're first a smart person, guy. hardly the first person to throw that out. And, you know, admittedly, I... I I am a supporter of Donald so Trump. Looters. If these looters are Biden people, looters, you might want to think twi twice about that. But I this. told my wife beginning of the summer that yeah. I just don't see Trump winning. For you were you were pretty much close to conceding oh, defeat, weren't you? That, that Biden would win. And yeah. again, I don't want to get into politics, but yeah. I told my wife last night watching yeah. this with her, yeah. I said, boy, this is just absolutely helping Trump. Yeah, you yeah, know? I agree totally. You know, so, uh, so anyway, uh, you know, the Celts. Uh, just concluded a four-game <clears throat> sweep over Philadelphia, yeah. and uh, you know missing Ben Simmons, as I said uh, before, one of the top ten players. So this guy can do it all. Yeah. Needs a little improvement on his jump shot, but great yeah. defender. Uh, just can cut through the paint. Uh, just losing him, you knew the Celtics were, so were going to be. Were, you were totally confident without yeah, Simmons. No, would I'm, I never, say I'm never totally confident. Now, with the history anything. of the Sixers and the Celtics, it's the first yeah. sweep Celtics ever had. Right, I, with, know, I, know I mean, that. just a great history Not together. About, yeah, incredible history. And you're old enough to I remember mean, the Wilt, Wilt, Bill Wilt, Russell, Bill Russell, Will Chamberlain battles. <laughs> um, so, wow, the um, first that's into the first postseason sweep. Yeah. Now we talked last week, and of course the, the Sixers coach. Gonzo. Yeah. Um, and Joel Embiid is a fine basketball Boy, player, looks, looks, yeah. but he's out of shape. He does right. not run. You, you want to watch a guy yeah. who can run the floor, and he's not yeah. as big as Embiid is. Uh, Daniel Tice from the Celtics. This guy yeah. can run. Well, I don't think Embiid's in shape. Yeah. Uh, uh, was it Mike Gorman? I heard somebody, and I was, I, unless it was a network guy, I said, somebody, hey, as, as well as Embiid has played in the series, they need, Sixers need to get more out of him. Was that Gorman, or was that maybe one of the network people? Pretty somebody. much everyone, actually. Really? Yeah. So he was clearly, when I, I didn't watch that much, it was painful to watch as a Celtics fan, because they'd get it into him. <laughs> he would just about, on every play, get a foul yeah. from Tice or yeah. Cantor. I mean, you know, it just seemed like he was almost unstoppable yeah. down you know, low. Like, part of the problems with Philadelphia is 
when you're giving contracts to people, yeah. you know, which occurred with the Red Sox, big contracts to p- people that don't deserve the big contracts. Yeah. Now, Tobias Harris. Boy, it's been 30, okay. 35 mil, 32 million a year, uh-huh. max contract. Okay, well. He doesn't I, mean much to me. It's of obviously. Course not. I was just going to say, yeah. let me uh, go to Lake and Maine huh. and, and stop 10 people right. and say, excuse me, do you know who Tobias Harris is? But aside from that, is this guy that good? Is he, uh, or is he, is he, he's a good player, but, but he's see him overpaid like, oh, Gordon, like, like Gordon like, Hayward. Like Gordon Hayward, exactly. That's right. And if, you know. Poor uh, 30, but I'm telling you, NBA salaries, if you think other sports are insane, NBA yeah. is. Totally the, um, insane. You know, Hayward, they, they did not miss, obviously, in the first round. Uh, you've got Walker, Brown, and Tatum to eat up his points. Yeah. Uh, now, with Toronto, it's probably a, a different story. See, I've mm-hmm. always thought the Celtics made a grave error by <clears throat> keeping Hayward in the starting lineup. Yeah. They don't need him in the starting lineup. So should, who, who would you have put in the starting lineup? I'd even put a guy like Ogilvy in there just to play really? defense. Yeah. Don't you know? Don't worry about scoring. Huh. Uh, just play good defense. Yeah. And you've got Hayward. Uh, the, the one negative thing I can say about Boston, I'm sure you'll agree with this, is their second unit isn't all that yeah. strong. <clears throat> and part of the reason for that is when you've got max contracts, yeah, now they're. Uh, yeah, uh, how much you, you want you Jason afford, Tatum? Right, you can't go and get a season pro at eight no, years money. for twenty yeah. million. You've got to play rookies, you yeah. know, making minimum contracts, um, and they really didn't get enough minutes during the season to really. Uh, get a good assessment. So they may get a break as the Celtics obviously got a big break with Simmons then. Isn't Lyle Lowry hurt? Who's Kyle, he? Kyle Lowry. I'm not think, sure what his situation is. I think he's is. got some questionable situation too. Now, the, the the downside for the rest of the playoffs for me personally, you mentioned Mike Gorman. Yeah. Well, the rest of these games go to the national networks. So, oh, oh is that right? Yeah. So, so they're they're out of the picture. Yeah. So you oh, know really? you might see a pregame or a post-game, post-game show on uh, uh, seven seventy nine. Oh, is that right? I didn't think of that. Is that right? So they're they're done. Yeah. And I, I can tell you, hmm. when the Washington Nationals won the World Series last year, yeah, I lost. Not a little, but for me personally, a lot yeah. because they didn't have your local. I guys. didn't have, uh, you know. Put uh, on, on, and you're watching TV, radio. You had your local guys on radio, or well, that did nothing. You couldn't even get them anyway, though. Because huh? with my Red Sox, I'll always get my radio guys. Yes, yeah. well, right, because the Red Sox are New England. You but have a local station. Radio, that did now, you no good, I guess. I could listen to it on you're serious watch it. radio, but yeah. I'm not going to sit in my car right. nor. Um, Actually, I probably could get on the computer, but the big, You're gonna watch big TVs anyway. are right up there. So, yeah, um, I agree. That's a, that's a loss. You know, that's a drag. And not to be wimpy here, but when you watch every you know 82 games a year, yeah. um, other than when I'm on vacation, those guys become your friends. It's like a soap opera. Oh, I, I agree. You know, I love especially those guys. baseball. Yeah. You know, uh, the, the announcers play just as big part of the game as the yeah. players. I think we talked do. about some of the guy Ken, Ken Coleman. Uh, Ken Coleman actually classic. lived in Cohasset next to Hingham. Okay. And I think my folks would run into him I think once in a while at Cohasset Golf Club. But he was like, uh, oh yeah, I mean I grew up with people. I love, love these guys. Yep. Yep. So yeah, that that hurts. Yeah, so, so your nip your net still still well, not doing much, huh? Now, but um, so now, as you sit and watch our show, this is a excellent double header night because the puck will drop about eight ten tonight. Bruins Lightning game Boy, game a good three between the Bees and the Lightning, wow. and to me, this is in fact the Eastern Conference Final because whoever gets out of this dogfight yeah. uh, should should win the right. next series. Now, uh, the Flyers and Islanders they got done right around six o'clock today, huh. and the. I, and if, I did pick the Islanders to win the series. Huh. Flyers did eke out a win here, four to three in overtime to tie the series up at one apiece. So as I mentioned, the Bees go tonight at eight o'clock, wow. and the next game 
unfortunately, it's uh, Friday night. You don't have to deal with an afternoon game. Right. Today at, at today, 7.30. Today being a back, back-to-back. Yeah. Interesting. And then their next game is Sunday to be determined when that will be. And again, uh, you don't want a 3 o'clock game no. uh, in the last days of August. And if it, and if it goes 7, they got a back-to-back next Tuesday and Wednesday, I think, yeah, if it I goes so. 6 and 7. Yeah. So, uh, the and state, that begs the question, who's in the goal tonight for the uh, Bruins? It will, well, it still is Halak. It's still, I mean, was Cassidy clear about that? Because yeah. earlier he said he, he wasn't yeah. sure. I, I did Halak. say Halak will be in, in goal tonight. And so, again, you saw, again, I was out in the kingdom away from the world, probably just, just as well. Um, you saw highlights last night. So it sounded like, I mean, OT, yeah. Yeah. lightning win in OT. Yeah. yeah, a good game. This David oh. Pasternak, and I talked about him last week. Yeah. This, this kid is so good. Yeah. Such a great playmaker. I mean, I, I think... Uh, when the regular season ended, he might have had the second most points in hockey. Yeah. I mean, that's probably not going to be competing with Patrice Bergeron. It's a great two-way player, but a heck of an right. offensive exactly. player. Exactly. That's uh, now. What is his contract status? Oh, the number they were, they were up. There was a big question about that before last season, uh, when they were you know there was no movement for a while, and they finally finally agreed. I think he's got five or six years wow. at about I don't know seven, eight or so. Are you kidding? I me? think the Bruins got a pretty good contract. Um, out well, of let me say if he's getting $8 million I don't a think, year. I don't think it's more than eight. Yeah. Somebody can certainly yeah. correct me. Um, if that is, in fact, the correct, he's grossly underpaid. Yeah, I might be wrong about that, but I don't think it's more than about eight or so. Yeah, yeah. But they had a, a stalemate for a month or two, but finally uh, got it done. Yeah. The guy I worried about, and you're already telling me he's gone, is Tory Krug. Yeah. I love Tory yeah. Krug, but again, it may come down to Buckos like it did with um, Johnny, Johnny Boychuk. Boychuk. I got his name right this time. Yeah, about time. four years ago. Yeah. yeah. The Bruins are right at the edge of the salary cap, yeah. and it actually may go down for next season yeah. due to the economics yeah. of this past year. Yeah. So, well, that's that's going to hurt. So, boy, Tory, see, do all yeah. you can do, Bruins. See yeah. if you can win a cup. And of course, the downside of being a excellent team is yeah. you have excellent players, which leads into excellent contracts uh-huh. that leads to just pushing that salary cap. So, uh-huh. um, Can I just read again, Bruins Lightning, can I just read a little bit from today's Boston Globe uh, front page sports story, Bruins and Lightning have hit on a rivalry by Matt Porter. I don't know Matt. The Lightning aren't the Canadians or the Maple Leafs or even the Rangers, but the Bruins have plenty of reasons to dislike them. Quoting uh, Bruce Cassidy, it's the cream of the crop going at each other, Coach Bruce Cassidy said before game two. I do consider it a rivalry, I guess. You're always going to have the original six. That's not going away anytime soon. But the modern day, I look at like with Pitt, Boston and Pittsburgh earlier in the decade, they had some good matchups, good playoff matchups, two good teams who are winning top end players. And as in any good playoff series, there's some hard-edged hateful play. Cassidy made no lineup changes for the second go-around. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, this is a real yeah. rivalry. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, those are the best two teams yeah. in hockey. Um, Is that right? Best two teams in know, hockey? A lot of folks predicted Colorado to get yeah. to the finals, yeah. and they're they're down two to nothing against the Dallas Stars. Huh. Um, Vegas and Vancouver are tied at one apiece. Um, so, again, I, I, it's... The Lightning and the Bruins, to me, are the, the cream of the crop here. Interesting. So. And we talked last week for your Canadian hockey. You got some nice bonus hockey out of your uh, That's, hab. you got to be feeling better about the future, aren't you? Um, a little bit? Uh, You're not, not particularly? Um, Boy, some, of the, some of the Team 690 guys clearly were feeling better well, about the future. Nick Suzuki, who the Hams got right. in the Max Pacioretty trade. Yeah, good, uh, good, highly good trade, good trade, right? Yeah, and they got Thomas Tatar, and which yeah. I want to give some verbiage on him. Thomas yeah. Tatar is a slight physical player. Really? He'll score you 30 goals a game really? and help you get into the playoffs. Huh. But once you're in the playoffs, a guy like that is he, he scored one goal in ten really? games really? and he's just completely invisible. Is and right? guys like him, they 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 have to put some points up yeah. or they're they're virtually useless out there on the ice. Yeah, really. uh, now uh, the Canadian's Claude Julian is is up and around after his heart operation. Yeah, and he did admit Good. he's sixty years old and he needs to make uh, lifestyle changes. 
Oh, is that as in like diet stuff you, or just more exercise, whatever? You, you hit the nail on the head really. of both of my he had, I think he had some minor issues in Boston while, while I think of it. I think he okay. might have missed a few yeah. games with some yeah. minor medical stuff. Yeah. So I wish Claude well. I, very, I love yeah. Claude. Yeah. And, of course, we're starting into the trade rumor season. Yeah. And uh, the Calgary Flames have done nothing with Johnny Hockey. Johnny Goodrow over the years. Oh, yeah. Whose father was, uh, oh, jeez, what was his first name? He played for North Country. Oh, the legendary Guy. Guy. Guy The the legendary Guy Boudreaux. From from North Country High School. And I remember seeing him a number of times, but I remember the... uh, uh, BFA North Country Championship yeah. 1976 really? down there, and he, he might have scored BFA won the game, but wow. I, Goodrow might have scored three, four goals wow. that game. The guy was the best player in, in the state. Which brings me back to Hingham High School days, hockey being the Harbor Men's uh, best sport, way better than football. And uh, It might not have been a championship, but it was a, a high school postseason game with uh, the Harbor Men going up against, in particular, Needham's Robbie oh, Fatora. Robbie Fatora. Fatoric. Would you come up with Robbie? Robbie Fatoric yeah. uh, spent some time in the NHL, but his claim to fame was he was an excellent WHA player. Oh, yeah. And he, he huh. did go on to do some NHL uh, coaching, head huh. coaching. I think I've got my journal. You probably can't see it. John I've got LeClaire my journal Foundation. clear. Didn't, didn't Robbie make it to a... That I cannot I, tell you. I, I almost think he did, yeah. but I might be dreaming. Yeah. If he did, I'm sure I talked yeah. uh, Hingham, yeah. Needham hockey. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm other sure. rumors I heard were the Canadians need a left shot defenseman yeah. power play and oh. Tory Krug's name actually did come oh, really? up. And they could and they certainly could afford him I assume. Oh, yeah. Boy, that'd be a little well, painful. Well we talked about that last week. Canadians have a unbelievable they got, they got, difficult time to get free agents yeah, right. come play but for they, them. But they've got some money to play with. Oh they have a lot of money. Uh, so they Boy, also. Tory, Tory Krug I can't think. Gotta think Tory I mean do what you gotta do. Yeah. I can't think he'd be too happy yeah. about moving yeah. from Boston to Montreal but and it might happen. Every Canadian fan knows the last number of years we have had not a backup goaltender yeah. and you look no further than Boston yeah. where they invest a little bit of money and they really good backup goaltender Hmm. and you know back in the day uh, when goalies would play just about just every, about every single game. game. Uh, you know, how now about, how about with no helmet? You know, going oh, yeah. back to what? Yeah. Even I, 60s? I mean, I can remember back in the sixties, Glenn Hall playing every single game. Can you, can you game. imagine being a goalie without a helmet? Well, today, today, I know you don't back, like. Back I don't, in the you, day, you don't like the players wearing helmets, right, though, right? Right. Um, Back in the day, and I remember somebody saying this, you might have had three people back in the 60s that really had that type of shot, yeah. but now everybody can shoot. And, yeah. of course, the technology of sticks, um, it, it's just made the shot that much harder. And, of course, the epic uh, uh, invention of the curved stick, yeah. uh, which is Stan Makita with the Chicago Blackhawks in the mid-60s was the guy that started that. And, in fact, the the blades got so curved that the NHL put a rule in about how big the curve can be on the stick. Now, if you remember, I think, Duke, 1977, right around there, John Cherry coaching the Bruins. And... uh, no, but no. I'm sorry. I think it was it was the Canadians, 1993. They're playing the yeah, LA Kings. Of course, their last uh, Stanley Cup playoff right. and victory. I think they were down a goal, if I remember correctly. Uh, and you're going to torture couple, me with too many men on the no, ice. No, that that was the Bruins in '77. Sorry, 1993. <laughs> the Canadians called a timeout and brought the ref over the bench and they said Marty McSurley, defenseman for the Kings, has an illegal stick. Oh, oh really? They measured it. And it was an illegal two-minute penalty. The, wow. I, if I remember correctly, Canadians went on to score a tying goal wow. and won the game in overtime that John LeClaire might have actually scored because really? LeClaire had a couple overtime goals yeah. during that wow, series. that's wild. Um, so, huh. But uh, what else? The season won't start until December first. Um, We're talking the next hockey season. Yeah, is that a firm firm date or yeah, fairly pretty firm? Much. 
pretty firm. Again, reduced number of games, I assume. I don't, you know, you don't I, I don't so? believe so. I, I don't know I mean, that. Don't the regular fact. seasons usually start by the end of mid to late uh, October? It's or? Uh, usually. October 8th, 9th, right around For there. regular season. Yes, absolutely. So we're talking about three yeah. months here. Yeah, because Duke, we right now, if things were normal, yeah. we'd be talking about the NHL uh, training camps opening up next week. Yeah. Uh, so, and as far as reducing games, you reduce games, you reduce income, and players want their full salary. So I think you're just going to have a more... Staggered. Oh, I guess we're talking schedule. a bunch of uh, back-to-back games. And, and yeah, not huh? only that, Duke, uh, you know how the season usually ends in early June? Yeah. If they, in fact, extend the season, got, you could got be talking July. They got, they, they, they've got to extend it if they're yeah. not starting until yeah. December. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um. who knows if they're going to play at the home ice? I mean, um. I think I might have read there could be four uh, arenas as the bubble arenas yeah. where uh, Edmonton is the Western Conference and Toronto's the East. Well, they, yeah. they, they may go for bubble arenas. Oh boy, for players, I mean, it's one thing to be uh, without their families for Agreed. what, talking six weeks yes. max or something? Yeah. yeah. A whole season? Yeah. yeah. Um, I know. And I, I, but, but you're right. But the suggestion that that might be what they have to do if they want to have a season might, might be the case. Yeah, I, you know, I like to sit here and make predictions, but with this uh, virus, I, I make zero really? predictions on how things are going to I mean, go. What do you think my chances? You know how much my Southern April trip means to me. Women's <sighs> tennis in Charleston, RBC Heritage in Hilton Head. What do you think? Give me a percentage. What's the likelihood I make that trip in April, do you think, right now? Uh, if I got at least 50-50? More than of course, it's 50. South South Carolina, which might be in my right. favor. Right, because I'm heading to Europe December fifth. So, what do you think my chances as, are? As in December fifth, this 20, December. Th- this, boy, you, but you you can't even you can't even go. Right, to, that's this is if things change. Right, and Europe is doing better. Right. In fact, I've got a story from from the uh, Wall Street Journal today saying they're starting to allow fans in for, I guess, uh, big soccer games and stuff. But, yeah. I mean, at this moment, you're not you're not going anywhere. Um, you, I mean, you couldn't fly into Europe I'm today. Flying, right. I'm flying into Genoa. So you, you, know, you couldn't do that today? No, no. Okay. That's, and uh, then I just jump in a van and drive over to the port city of Savona huh. and I'll jump on a ship there, Duke, and it's a Costa cruise line who will be starting up um, in a couple weeks. Um, MSC has already started up. They've already started. Some cruise ships have left Italy recently. Yeah. yeah. So, so flying you know, thing. I'm confident. Um, I'm not going to bet you on things. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in April, a uh, couple weeks after you, I'll be heading Back to Europe? Yeah. Uh, Boy, we hope. We this, hope. This is a headline in the Wall Street Journal today. Europe prepares to bring back fans. With firmer control of the virus across the Atlantic, event organizers plan to reopen the gates. And actually, they start with the French Open, postponed till what, uh, September and stuff. But uh, crowds are actually relearning, sorry, returning to a major international sporting event in the year of the coronavirus. Boy, good, good luck, Hawk. I know how much your trip mean to you and I yep. know how much my trip means to me. It's uh, boy. Yeah. I just yeah, I, I'm not gonna open my big mouth and give you any night hunt guarantees. Yeah. Um, on the football front But 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 the crew ahead. just back to your trip, the cruise part, I mean the trip is still solid. I mean nothing's been it's still there. I mean they haven't right. the, so the cruise part of it is right. still right. On. You know, my cr- cruise in this past April obviously was Canceled. Yeah. So, I and you're said, not going. You, you have no particular concerns about being on a cruise ship if you pull off this trip. No, no. more concerns on walking to Walmart. Are they te- are they do they do they test everybody before they, they get do. on the ship? Yeah. I assume. Yeah. And if uh-huh. I do have the opportunity to go, and I told Donna that uh, 
we're basically going to be like guinea pigs. Yeah. There's going to be so many restrictions and this, that, and yeah. the other thing. But but she's still psyched. I mean, she's I'm very much hoping this trip holds together. She, well, she's hoping, but if you asked her if yeah. she thought she was going, the answer would be no. no but, she, but she hopes she can yeah. pull it off. Right. And we're both in the yeah. same belief that cruising in this country will open up after the presidential election. Yeah. Uh, the last thing the current well, probably, probably especially if you're if your guy wins be a, probably a right. heck well, of a lot like there is no at this point there is no cruising until november 1st is that right okay. that's, uh, that's the day now no, i think the presidential Jennifer. election is at the 8th i can't no november 3rd, 3rd. For, okay. first tuesday so, november you know what's going to happen is they'll, yeah. they'll push it back say to the 15th then yeah. then then go from there so yeah. so uh, so duke on the football front yeah. um Looks like uh, football's looks like, holding together. Okay, right? What's the date? 26 today, and they yeah, start? September 13. Is that the big? The Sunday, it's, it's the 10th is Thursday night football. I'll check it. So Thursday night's yeah. the first night. Uh, and the big big day is that sun following Sunday. So it looks like Cam Newton undoubtedly will be your starting quarterback. Stidham has That's not right. looked good. Yeah. In camp, and anybody who said that it wasn't going to be Cam, I said you're you're crazy. It's obviously going to be Cam. Um, I, I guess I'm one of those dummies that believed it was an open competition. However, if anybody got hurt so. by no preseason, it yeah. was guys like Jared Stidham. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. yeah, they're not going to they're not going to bring Cam in and sit Cam on the bench. Yeah. Well, Sorry. it's not a big. And no offense to Jared. And, right. Uh, Jared now, Stidham, who I hope has a great career down the line. Yeah. I don't think it hurts yeah. him a bit right. to be behind Cam yeah. Newton for at least a year. And, you know, the, we'll see if the Patriots win with Newton because if if they get off, say, by midseason to a bad start, yeah. then it's a very easy PR move by Belichick by saying, I guess. hey, we've got a veteran here. We can't yeah. win. I can guarantee Stidham. you they're not going to do what your guys did and sit Eli after, what, two two games two last games. year, which yeah. was absurd. I agree. You can be sure the yeah. Pats will not do that yeah. with Cam Newton. Yeah. yeah. So uh, now I did look at the ESPN power poll for what it's worth, yeah. and they have the Patriots ranked 15th. 32 teams. So oh, is that right? right that's, in the that sounds, you know. That sounds about right, right. to you. Eight, you know, at this point, if I had to guess, that'd be an 8-8 eight and eight team. I guess I'd probably put them up a little higher in part because of the And it's not because of the. And a decent defense. The defense should be decent. Right. But they lost a lot of key players. Yeah, and I, I'm basing my opinion here, not on the quarterback situation, but just the players no, that, that decided that's fair. to opt out. That's fair. Um, and they, they lost more players opted out than any other team? I think they had eight players, And that's maybe? apparently more than anybody else? I think so. Giants? How many did you guys lose? Three. Learn? Really? That's all? Right. And the biggest name, huh. who, who is the most overpaid player in the NFL, and yeah. might have been could be on the worst contract ever given out in the history of in the, the NFL. NFL. That Nate Soldier, former oh, is that, left. Is that, oh, yeah. is that right? Yeah. You'd go that strong? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is another, in your view, another classic case of Belichick uh, moving somebody on so, yeah. a year or two early than a year or two right. late. It's better to get rid of a player is one year or two early right? than one you year or two You would make that out oh, to be one of the Duke, worst he's contracts? He's making $19.5 million. Wow. Now, Duke, we had the fourth pick in the draft this year. Yeah. Do you know what position we drafted? Do you know? Left tackle. Yeah. You know, here we ha- have a big free agent from yeah. a couple of years, and uh, and they can't they can't move him and pick up half his salary or anything. Yeah. Nobody would yeah. take him. My guess is if he had not opted out, he would have been the right tackle huh. this year. Wow. Um, so, uh, but huh. the Giants, okay, they're ranked 29th, Duke, yeah. in the power poll. Okay, that are, is are the they really? fourth worst team. Okay, well, yeah. where'd they pick in the April draft? Fourth overall. Uh, yeah. So, they're they're not moving anywhere. They're stuck in neutral. Yeah. Now, they have the worst team as the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they should do all they can this year. Yeah, uh, A good fan will root against them, and they're in the Trevor Lawrence sweepstakes. Yeah. Uh, one of the better quarterbacks to come out of college in a number of years out of Clemson. Uh, yeah, although they had a pretty good one who ended up uh, with Houston, Mr. Deshaun, Mr. Watt, Mr. W- Watson. Watson Deshaun, seems like Watson, a pretty yeah. decent yeah. quarterback. Um, but Lawrence is so highly touted. Yeah. The other bottom teams is Washington that 
undoubtedly would take, uh, Lawrence is going to go number one, period. And I think Carolina might have been the other team uh, below the Giants. Huh. So, And the Giants, today, two players, their second round pick, Xavier McKinney, okay, he out of Alabama, yeah. he was thought to go to the safety thin Dallas Cowboys at the 16th position overall. Yeah. While C.D. Lamb, was a f- wide receiver, was still shockingly available to the Cowboys. So huh. the, the boys took Lamb, and the Giants, early in the second round, would be the 36th, 7th pick overall. They had a trade all set to be made because they had traded the third round pick in the Leonard Williams trade yeah. with the Jets uh, midseason last year. But their condition was, if McKinney's still there, they're, they're not making the trade. Yeah. Well, Xavier McKinney is still there. And this guy is kind of a, uh, well, the, the, the big name, if you remember, was Isaiah Simmons. Uh, huh. That the the Half the giant nation wanted he kind of a hybrid linebacker, yeah. can, can pass rush, can cover, can do everything. Yeah. Uh, the Giants did pass on him, as I mentioned, took Andrew Thomas out of Georgia, and Simmons ended up, I think, going seventh or ninth of the Arizona yeah. Cards. Yeah. Um, so, but they said McKinney was kind of like the poor man Simmons. He, he's just that much behind Simmons. Yeah. So. The football world thought the Giants got a steal. So today, um, Xavier McKinney's safety will undergo surgery to repair a fractured left foot. Wow. The fracture is a fifth metarosal, whatever, I don't know, frequently associated with a Jones fracture, whatever that means. I know sports, I don't know medicine. Yeah, uh, this is not a season end injury, but McKinney could be sidelined up to three months. Um, and he was expected to start a safety to play the hybrid safety slash linebacker position. And then later today, uh, David Mayo, linebacker, will undergo surgery after t- uh, tearing the mes- meniscus in the left wow. deep knee. Um, and this is just with their, their own team. They were obviously not talking right. just with their own practices. And here's a guy that was second on the team in tackles last year. Wow. And again, when you're a bad team, not only do you have bad starters, yeah. but you have even worse backup yeah. people. Um, so, huh. um, And I'm torn right now. They won four games last year of how many games they're going to win. Um, I think they could win one less game this year. They have a horrible schedule, so they could end up with three wins. If everything goes really well, they could go 7-9 and nine this year. That's the best you'd give them? That's the absolute best yeah. I, I, I give them. Yeah. So, um, you know, I've got the Dallas Cowboys kind of almost walking away with that division. That right? yeah. uh, can I go back to the Celtics just you, for a you second? You certainly may. This is courtesy of the Boston Herald yesterday. What's nice about going through Newport on my way to camp, I can get my Boston papers. Anybody, if I can get them around here during the week, and again, I got better where, things. Where do you used to get your Oh, was that at the, at, at the no at the at the paper store? I guess it's a jolly right down below me at the bottom of Lakeview Terrace. Okay, yeah, just no more. I can get you know I get we I get the Sunday papers come into different places, but thank you Newport. Anyway, just a Kyle Lowry. I told you I thought he had an issue. This is from yesterday's Boston Hero. Kyle Lowry's status currently uncertain. Things should get more challenging for the Celtics in the second round as a matchup with Toronto Raptors awaits. I got to go down a bit. We're sorry, it's not giving me this right up the top. However, that depth for Toronto could take a hit as the Raptors announced on Monday that All Star guard Kyle Lowry has a left ankle sprain sustained during Sunday's game against Brooklyn. Lowry underwent an MRI on the NBA campus in Orlando. Team said his condition will be updated as appropriate. Okay. Anyway, maybe who knows? Who knows? So that's one thing in sports they give no information, especially yeah. hockey. Upper right. body injury, upper body. lower 
bought her injury, yeah. and they will never, ever tell yeah. you, which I don't understand why. Yeah. I mean, if it's a knee injury, yeah. I, I don't believe players in the yeah. opposing locker room yeah. are going to say, hey, let's go rip this guy's yeah. knee apart. Hey, I'm sure we'll get into baseball at some yep. point. I've got a Dustin Pedroia story oh, wow. about things okay. in yesterday's okay. Herald. Well, let's segue right how into how that. About you want something I've got? This is from courtesy of today's Newport Daily Express. Is that a... That's the daily, daily paper. Daily paper. Yeah. Not the best paper in the world, but did, I, I always get it. Did you go through Newport? Oh, yeah. It's a camp. I go right through Newport. Okay. I'll go be, through the I'll heart. In fact, I mentioned to Ian on both ways. I said, Nighthawk's got a new favorite restaurant. We go we go right by the, you know, when you, you go along the lake, when you go through downtown, then you turn left and yep. stuff, leaving Magog on the left, yep. and the shopping center on your left, yep. and you just keep going down. Just before you get to the east side is where I turn right to head out to the... Okay. Farther reaches of the kingdom, and of course, so I mentioned you, your love of here with East Side. I have dinner reservations at the East Side Restaurant in Newport, five forty-five yep. Friday. I mentioned that to uh, he and today. Yeah, and of course, you know, yeah, what great I, place. Do you know what I'm going to dine on? That I don't know. Chicken and biscuits. Oh, is that what you, what you had last time? Uh, right. They, they yeah, make right. it unbelievable. Yeah. And yeah, very good restaurant. Yeah. It, it, it takes an hour and a half to get up there. Yeah, but, of I course, know, the, big, that the well. big deck is right on the lake. Yeah. So it's, it's just a fabulous yeah. spot. Oh, yeah, now, go, did you drive by the right big, big hole in the center of the oh, city? Oh, sure. Yeah, we yeah. go right down yeah. downtown. Yeah. And, sure. of course, uh, I'll, tell, boy, I'll give you a creamy place. If, for chance, you're looking for a creamy in Newport, a great store, in fact, is a pick and shovel. I'm sure. Walmart opening up didn't help them, but it's a hardware plus store. Anybody who knows this store would have high okay. praise for it. Right next to them, right when you're walking in, and if you keep going down Main Street past the big hole on the right, maybe one more block, I think it's Coventry Tr- Coventry Street, turn right. The post <laughs> office is on the left, but the pick and shovel is just a short block down okay. on your right, and I think it's Tim and Doug's, a creamy place right next to uh, the pick and shovel, if, you're out, if you Duly have uh, noted. room for dessert. Yeah. And um, the pick and shovel is a great now, store. That big hole I in the Gordy, center I bet of the Gordy city. Winters, our friend Gordy, who's done a great job with his Ace Hardware stores, nice to have the Swanton store open. I bet Gordy would say, yep, that's a good story. Um, the Bill Stanger and his partner. Like, boy, Quiros, I don't know. Just, just play, um, What's his name? Qu- Qu- Quiros. Where's he from, dude? Uh, no, and he's got a Florida connection. All I know is Florida Indian seems to be his main hand. Not, not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, but what did he get, eight years? Eight years. Plea um, deal? I'm not sure he's been... He did plead guilty. I think that's the recommended sentence. I don't think he's been sentenced, but I think that's what okay. the prosecutors want. But that put off Stanger's trial. And remind me of this yeah. epic business. No, the they EB-5. Were getting all the, the middle, uh, out of country money. Some type of computer technology type. Uh, the place in the big hole in Newport yes. is a bio, bio, bio okay. medicine, bio right. med facility. And ANCO or something. And we're talking Never happened. extremely good paying jobs. I mean, Newport was Presumably. just, was like God came to earth. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, and of course, uh, JP, which you've got there a few times, they, they did a ton of no, Condo yeah. building. Well, you, know, you know the golf, golf course. Every time I think I'm a half-decent golfer, just get me to Jay Peak and you'll set me straight. Um, and I've never even, incredibly, because I still like skating once in a while, I've never even walked into the uh, ice, ice rink there. Yeah, they call but it the, uh, I have walked into the uh, the water, yeah. the pump house, where yeah. my kid used to go once in a while. Yeah. Oh, um, they threw a ton, a ton of money. Um, I second your emotion because I... I used to go up to J Peak year after year after yeah, year. Good deal, boy. With my good, son-in-law, good, good, my, good deal my future golf, son-in-law. Right? Yeah. Great deal. I think was like what, forty-five dollars, including and, and cart. And that's a place I hate carts, but that's a place right. you can. Oh, you need, you a, need cart. a cart. Um, and we we got done around, and my son-in-law Roy goes, yeah. uh, Rick, uh, do you mind if we choose another golf course? Oh, is that right? Needs a so better golfer than I. So did Roy get night. chewed up pretty yeah, good too? It, it would just eat you alive, yeah. and you better have a back full of balls yeah. when you go there. Yeah. Now, the beauty of playing at JP yeah. is the beauty. Um, oh, yeah. You, know, you can't get caught course. up on your score. Yeah. Uh, it's just an unbelievable. I think the architect from, I'm tempted to say like Graham McDonough, now I'm off on the name, but I think a Montreal or Canadian guy, yeah. but oh no, nice course. Yeah. And I haven't been up there for a few years. I think you've told me the fairway, the grass used to be a little 
uh, thread threadbeer, a little slight exaggeration, but I think that's uh, mm-hmm. gotten better over yeah. the years. Yeah, yeah. And course, we're talking about some of the fair Champlain. How about a quick plug for our Mr. Sailor? Is it at Champlain? Chris, I mean Chris Sailor. Some of the, some of the fairways are. I mean, unbelievable. You're on your like living room right yeah. there. Uh, very very fortunate yeah. to Great have job. such a nice golf course. Uh, yeah. A uh, nice Champlain's had a great season, which we've talked about. Yeah. Now, are you well, golfing? We probably should try to grab Mr. Swim one of these weeks. We I could told maybe get him Mike. that uh, he's going to be on the show in November yeah. because of right. the Masters. Yeah, okay, Very apropos fit time. Yeah. And the golf course always, well, I shouldn't say always, give or take, Veterans Day. is Yeah, it's the, around Veterans Day. Club. Yeah. So, you know, and I will golf right to the end now. Yeah. Uh, I think he won't allow the uh, the superintendent you on the golf course. No, last year, weren't 40, you, kind of, you were fighting for some extra time, weren't you? Well, if I always see the forecast looks yeah. good after they close, but I recall yeah. last year they, they actually closed at a yeah. good time. But, I mean, I, I dress fairly well when I go golfing. Yeah. However, when we get into temps into the 40s, yeah. uh, I, I'm the worst-looking Golfer hey, out just there, be, but be, I'm just be warm. I'm just throwing every layer on, be warm. and it, it, it's still nice to get out there for the walk. Yeah, and yeah I'm glad stuff. I had some extra stuff in the trunk of my. Ian didn't even bring long pants to the kingdom, and he never, he didn't have long pants. He didn't wear them, but well, he was happy I had some. He didn't even have a long sleeve shirt. Yeah, he needed yeah, that. Yeah, I hate wearing pants yeah. in other... And t- typically, won't you wear shorts until like November 1 or something? About or? Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving? Yeah. Yeah, I just, I hate pants. And, really? Uh, I, had pa- I had pants on all day today. Yeah. And did some hiking in them. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. So. Okay. I, I was, so. What I was going to throw at you was a new, again, long uh, sidetrack. This is a team-by-team look at policies for NFL fans attending games. Oh, I games. thought you were going to, okay, you do that, but don't forget Dustin. Oh, yeah, I'll get back to Dustin. So team-by-team, team, you want me to go through every team? Quickly, it's short. Okay. Arizona team hasn't publicly discussed plans for fans. This is a, an associated press story, I assume. Atlanta, no fans in September. Affects two games, September 13th and September 27. Baltimore, no fans for the start of the season. Buffalo, no fans in September. Affects two games. Carolina, team hasn't publicly discussed plans for fans. Chicago, team plans no fans for the start of the season. I heard that. Cincy, no fans for home opener on September 13. I guess nothing, no, no info after that. Cleveland, Browns have guidelines for masks, but no specifics about crowds. Also offered opt-out option for for season ticket holders who skip 2020 and not lose their spot in 2021. It's nice to hear. Team continues to work with state task force and hopes to have fans. Dallas announced plans for limited capacity for all games. Interesting. Denver, no fans for home opener on September 14. No more info. Detroit, no fans for the first two games. Green Bay, no fans for the first two games. Uh, one September, the, hey, Duke, the second let me game, October you. 5. Yeah. What a great graphic. Alan oh, wow. just put up empty seats. <laughs> no, good job, Touche, Alan. That is excellent. Alan. That is excellent. Houston, no fans in September. Indianapolis, no more than twenty-five percent capacity. So I guess we're talking. I guess we're. What, what was the? Oh, and we'll get to Kansas City. Kansas City, I heard doing about the same thing. Jacksonville plans to have fans at about twenty-five percent capacity at all games. Okay. Interesting how they decide who gets yeah. to go. Kansas City plans to have fans. Fans at about 22% of capacity. That'd be about 16,000 fans. That I heard. Vegas, no fans for the 2020 season. Chargers, no fans indefinitely. 2020 season. L.A. Rams, no same thing. No right. fans They're indefinitely. In the brand new stadium, so right. so oh boy. so cold field, whatever. Oh yeah, that's brand a new multi. Stadium. Well over a billion dollars wow. uh, to build that place. How weird of that first and game, no fans. I watched episode three last night of Hard Knocks on HBO. Oh, yeah. And who's the team this, well, this season? This year. It's uh, the two L.A. teams, the Rams oh, yeah. and Chargers. And let me tell you, huh. with really no football activity going on, yeah. um, I mean, it was a big deal that they finally were able to put pads on. Yeah. But it's an extremely <clears throat> uninteresting show this year. Oh, Usually really. hard knocks right. is a 
great show. Yeah, I haven't watched it, but so so yeah, so LA, forget forget it. Miami, maximum of thirteen thousand fans will be allowed at the regular season opener for September twenty against Buffalo. Minnesota, no fans at home games in September affects two games. New England, no fans at home games in September affects two games. September thirteenth against Miami, September twenty seven Vegas. New Orleans, no fans for opener on September thirteen. Uh, have not ruled out fans on September 27 against Green Bay. Giants, no fans indefinitely 2020 season. That's, Jets. Per, that's per Governor Phil Murphy. Okay, Jets, same thing, obviously. Yep. Philadelphia, no official announcement by team yet. Pittsburgh, team hasn't publicly discussed plans for fans. They might want to do it one of these days. <laughs> San Fran, no fans for September 13 opener against Arizona. Seattle, no fans for at least the first three home games. September 20 is uh, New England. Tampa Bay, team hasn't publicly discussed plans. Tennessee, no fans in September. Washington, no fans for the 2020 so season. So it begs the question, Duke. Interesting. But it, how, do it, right. how do you determine? Right, that's my question. If 25% capacity, you're, right. how do you become one of those 16,000 people? the folks people? who have spent the most money, the best seats, or the that, folks that, who that have had season my... tickets the longest time? You yeah. think the folks who spent the most money. Yeah, I would think those people that have $1,000 But that'll be interesting. Seats, but and I'm uh, sure not all of them will go to the game, but presumably probably most of them. Now, as of tomorrow night, yeah. it's what, two weeks away from the start of football. Yeah, we're talking. I mean, uh, we're, we're, yeah, we're close. So, and of course, with no, Boy, no preseason, pre-season games, and uh, I yeah, admit, they're, they're, they're meaningless games per se. Yeah. But Except if you're, uh, if you're you know, battling the 80th for player. positions, right. yeah. you want to scout out some dra- draft choices. Sure, if you're especially um, undrafted. I mean, the Patriots for what, like 15 straight years have had at least one undrafted free agent. Yes. Jacoby Myers last year out of yeah. NC State. Yeah. And like I mentioned last week, this helped me with pronunciation, Nikhil Harry. Is that how you pronounce his oh, name? Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, but I got a headline of him showing some life. I got a headline life. today. And yeah. they have another player Something I keep like reading that. about. You know, free yeah. agent, street free agent. And he's got a long name. Oh yeah, You're and, ahead of me probably. I, I can't remember remember that he's huh. looked really good huh. uh, but there's been a dearth of information that's really not much yeah. to talk about yeah. we're usually this time of the year uh, we, we have a plethora of things to talk about yeah. but uh, it's just going to sneak up on us and uh, you know we've mentioned before basketball and hockey has played really well in the bubble yeah uh, baseball yeah, you can well. kind of notice I think football is, is going to I think you're really going to feel no fans for that. Yeah, boy, um, Dan Shaughnessy had a, had a field day. You could probably guess which way he went. Not on pro He didn't seem to have a much of an issue with pro football. Hey, these guys, that's what they do for a living. Totally different ball game. But BC football in pandemic, not worth the risk. And he uses he coins, uh, of course, Clemson's a big, kind of the SEC-like yeah. team in the ACC, along with Florida State. Aside from that, there's a big drop down in how much football means. Shaughnessy makes a reference to the Clemsonization of the ACC. He's just outraged. And he does quote some of the university presidents saying, hey, if the students are ba- aren't back on campus, we're not playing football. Yeah. Well, guess what? <laughs> students aren't back on campus at one of my alma maters, UNC Chapel Hill. And guess what's going forward? You know, foot- yeah. Football, I guess. Yeah. Well, you just mentioned Clemson, and I mentioned 20 minutes ago, yeah. who's yeah. the number one football player in college this Trevor, year? Or, or, Trevor, Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence from yeah. Clemson. Sure. Yeah. So, um, uh, I mean, f- college football starts up in about a week and a half. I well, mean, t- t- I, 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 there be, there's usually a game. Uh, in fact, Duke's even been in the first game, like in in that, that year at that Giants at Jet Stadium. Yeah. It's even late August usually, yeah. I think. And I'm not a big college football right. follower. Yeah. So, are you telling me that most uh, of the schools are going forward? Well, no. I mean, well, conference wise, that we talked last week, I think Big Ten and Pac-12, no, no football gone. But ACC, SEC, and Big 12, the other three okay. Power 5 conferences, I think are, they certainly haven't, I mean, the SEC would be kicking and screaming. Mm-hmm. I mean, Alabama, you know, those guys, Georgia, they'd be the last people yep. to concede defeat. ACC, I think, has kind of been on the bubble right. on this. So you're telling me Michigan, I think right, right Michigan now, and Ohio no, State, no football. Will, no football. Oh, yeah, Big 10 and Pac-12, no football. And, of course, the Ann big, Arbor. The Big House will uh, have no. Ann Arbor, 103,000. I think it might even be 110. It's up to the big house, but okay. anyway, over a hundred thousand. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, they announced that, I mean, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. I wonder how difficult or how long it takes to get out of the parking lots at yeah, Ann Arbor yeah. after a game. I think a smart thing to do would be to hang around for a good hour or so. Yeah. And I've never, I've barely been in Michigan. I think the only two states I haven't physically spent a minute or two in in the continental U.S. are Montana and North Dakota. Idaho, I'm not sure. I was in Salt Lake City once and purposely meant the Idaho, Idaho border is not far away. I can't remember if well, I jumped in there. If you and our remember, old friend Kenny, Kenny Rodman was out in eastern Washington okay. State. We weren't far from Idaho when I visited him, but we didn't go to well, Idaho. If you recall, back in August of 2003, yeah. I was on my honeymoon yeah. up in Alaska. Wow. And I called good, the good, sports good show. Spot. I called huh. the sports show from Alaska. Wow. Uh, I haven't been to Alaska, and I'd yeah. love to go to Alaska. Yeah. So did you guys do a, a cruise? Out of Seattle. Wow. And oh, being the loving... Great. And, and you caught a you caught a ball game or two, right. of course. So I went to Seattle, spent a couple nights there. Yeah, Donna's and who, great. You got to love Donna. Who, who was playing at uh, Safeco Field? Yeah, on Sox? The Boston Red Sox. Really? Wow. And, you know, I saw a young Ichiro for the Mariners really? play. And a really nice baseball yeah. stadium. And that correct? was a fairly new ballpark wow. at that time. So <laughs> that's great. And it was walkable distance uh, from the hotel. Wow. And of course, back in '03, and it's. Ten times worse now is Seattle's known for uh, homeless people and the primarily a lot of young drugged out people. I mean, and every of course had the issue with every the, uh, street corner yeah, was just line? oh really? hand handling. And hmm. uh, Donna hates this, but I usually carry some bills with me. And is that right? You hand I, it I do be, well, just because they're not sitting at home waiting for a welfare check. At hmm. least they're out hustling. Huh. My um, good friend Libby, who is a long ago Franklin County resident, uh, we have a great walk every time I make it to D.C. Very excellent financial person. Very smart lady. But uh, we have our traditional walk on the C&O Canal out of uh, Georgetown that goes way out to Maryland. Great mm -hmm. place to walk. The old uh, Barge Canal. But anyway, but Libby He's a nicer person. We'll walk back into Georgetown, which is, uh, you know, but but anyway, but maybe that's why you do see some panhandlers Georgetown who figure is they're going to do pretty high well. High class area. And Libby's a nicer. She'll give a fuck yeah. to somebody yeah. she yeah. says. Yeah. Well, Huck, I'll never forget a, a side oh. note here. I think we were at the original Dunkin' Donuts. You took me. On one of the Hingham trips. Right. And, you said uh, Hawk. Quincy. I'm, right. This is the story. The original Dunkin' Donuts. Right. And wasn't that where the guy said, gave you his sad luck story? I got to go to gas. Cape. I got to go to Cape Cod. Marcel. I don't have any gas money. And I'm going, oh, give me a break, buddy. Give me a better story than that. I think you might have given him 20 bucks. I gave him $20. Nicer, nicer person yeah. than me. Yeah. Yeah. But that was the original Dunkin' yeah. Donuts. Well, part of me is a bit selfish. I'm hoping yeah. when I die and God's looking at my resume <laughs> and they'll say, oh, back in 2005, <laughs> you gave a guy a 20 to get some gas. Yeah. So That's great. Yeah. So okay, well, hit me with Dustin, Dustin because I've asked maybe, you. For can the I just last... read? Can I just start reading the story? I sure. haven't read it yet. Right. Again, I'm just now looking at my papers. Big headline, and again, this is from yesterday's Boston Herald. Red Sox are missing Pedroia's loud voice. I guess we should say Hawk. I know we had problems with our one call. I guess last week, but but well, you know, be nice to get the call. We're not sure what the just story to is. Hear if our audio system. Right. So please, work. somebody, uh, do us a favor. Try to try to check in. We'd appreciate that. Again, five two eight. 5315. And this is by Steve Hewitt, another Herald. Longtime second baseman still in Arizona as he mulls future. God, he, he's. Meaning he, what? He lives in sounds, Arizona? Sounds, oh, I guess that's where lives or where he's been, I think, for a while, but it makes it sound like he hasn't given up anyway. Last Monday, as the Red Sox were mired in a long losing streak, Xander Bogarts received a much needed dose of encouragement. The Red Sox shortstop reached out to Dustin Pedroia, who turned 37. <gasps> wow. Oh, isn't that unreal? Oh. Someone who looks like he, he he doesn't age. He'll never be older than 30. Um, he wow. always looked old for his age, even at yeah, age 21. He played so yeah. hard. Anyway, to wish him a happy birthday. And the longtime teammates' conversation naturally turned to baseball in a losing streak that ultimately went nine games. In a lost season that's made it hard for Bogarts to have fun at times, Pedroia, as he always has, provided some hope. 
He said, keep your head up. This is a tough game, tough time for you guys. You guys will make it through this. Just continue to grind. And Dustin Pedroia knows something about grinding, Bogart said. He's always a very optimistic guy. He always sees the light at the end of the tunnel. No matter how bad the situation might be at this point, he's always positive. I'll try to get to what Dustin's saying. The Red Sox could certainly use Pedroia's voice these days as they stumble to a 920 start. Pedroia hasn't played in a game since April 17, 2019. What did he play? A couple, which has limited him to nine games since the start of the 2018 season. Pedroia is still at home. Yep, lives in Arizona. Still at home in Arizona where there's been no change in his status. Red Sox Chief Baseball Officer Chaim Bloom told the Herald that his knee is still not in a place where it makes sense for him to rejoin the club. Mm. God, is there, I mean, is there holding out some hope? Well, how's the second baseman, though? Jose Pizarro or yeah, whatever? I can't the, even. I mean, is, isn't he pretty young? Or is he a veteran? I don't even know. Veteran from Cincinnati rides like okay. a, But I will tell you this, maybe. Duke. Yeah. I have not met, met one Red Sox fan. Yeah. And discuss baseball with them. Yeah. That I actually said I'm 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 watching the Red Sox this season. Right. And I'd be, I I give them a little attention, not yeah. much. For a team that desperately needs some kind of spark, Pedroia, even if he can't play, is sorely missed. Quoting Bogarts, whenever Pedroia's in the clubhouse, you know he's here. It's not like, hey, is PD here or when is PD coming? No. When PD's here, you definitely know the moment he steps foot into the clubhouse. He's just so confident. I'm just trying to get if we get anything more out of Pedroia here. Boy, I, I guess, guess my hasn't. only question is, yeah. will, will he be in Florida in February? Jeez, that just seems hard to believe. Um, again, I'm just seeing if I'm seeing any hard. It looks like we're not getting much. Yeah. Uh, I guess he hasn't totally given up, but it sure sounds. Yeah. I'd give him, what, a, a 1% chance maybe? Yeah. Anyway, let's end the end of this. That won't change, and the Red Sox are still holding on hope that he could return one day. Pedroia is under contract through 2021. And though his future of playing is unclear, unclear, and even unlikely, I guess it's unlikely, a comeback wouldn't surprise those closest to him, given his attitude and unwillingness to give in. Well, it would sure as heck surprise yeah. me. Yeah. Anyway, so, I wish him well. Yeah. Now, um, my Washington world champion Nationals yeah. and the Boston Red Sox have something in common. Boy, you guys are still, aren't they at 500 or just under? Uh, we're both last place in our is that, is that right? Yeah. Now, wow. uh, the Red Sox, if the season... And I will tell you, Duke, today's the 26th. Yeah. There's literally one month of baseball left. So they're, about, half, they're about halfway, and aren't Sunday, they? Sunday, September 27th. Yeah. Very close to the halfway wow. point of the season. Of the 60-game so schedule. It'll be gone before you know it. But, you know, I mention every week where the Red Sox were at. Yeah. Uh, they're a game out of the number one overall pick. Yeah. Um, Pittsburgh and the LA Angels are tied with the worst record, huh. and the Red Sox are third, third spot right now. Now, I mentioned last week how stupid the LA Angels are. Okay, yeah. uh, they they signed Anthony Rendon, your guy, for like thirty five million a year. Yeah, have Mr. Trout and. As great as Rendon is, yeah. which he is, yeah. they have no pitching, and that's yeah. where they they should have went. Okay, the worst pitching in the American League is the Boston Red Sox at five point nine two. Okay, although I'd say well, I, I, I can't, oh in the league actually I'm thinking of the trade to Philly. Philly's even got a way worse ERA. They picked up a course two. Have you got Philadelphia? I there? don't. I only have the American I think League. I think they're actually higher. Mike, they might have been seven or eight ERA. Well, they're not that. They they were right no. around six. So. Okay, but but, um, too, but really bad. But the Angels, okay, yeah, thirteenth out of fifteen on the American League. With a 5.41 ERA, oh. they had no pitching going into the season, yeah, and still, and but still it don't. was stupid because yeah. you, you fill in. So why why you, spend all that money on someone who's first. not going to do much? Uh, the Nationals are in last place in the National League, four and a half games out, with an 11 and 16 record, yeah. which is a .407 winning percentage, which yeah. is atrocious. Now I will tell you, they are as good as the record is. Yeah. Uh, Steven Strasburg had an operation today. Yeah. 
a carpal tunnel of all injuries. Let me let me guess. I'm sure some doctor said it was a successful surgery. Have you ever heard a doctor after any any sports? Have you, have Can you I ever tell heard you something? Sorry, the surgery didn't go well. I am waiting for a surgeon to <laughs> yeah. say. Whew, the surgery didn't go well. I drank right. way too much last night. <laughs> didn't get any sleep, and my wife is really on my case. So literally, have we ever heard no. after a, right. after a, a major sports right. person surgery that it didn't go well? Yeah. So Strasburg is out, <laughs> signing wow. the new contract at thirty five million a year. But presumably pitched, signed for next year. He'll be ready to go in spring training. Um, so he pitched a grand total of ten innings. Wow. And you pro. Prorate his contract. Wow. I, I believe it's he'll get thirteen million this year for wow. those ten innings pitched. <clears throat> for ten ten innings. Ten innings pitched. Wow. Not a bad job. Uh, now football football players must go crazy. The when other they, thing, when they hear which that. I knew the Nats and Red Sox had in common, and this is the scary part of the future for these two organizations. Um, you cannot tell me one bona fide prospect pitcher that the Red Sox have in their system. You cannot tell me that. Not nobody. Yeah, they I don't. told you, John Lester was the last, you know, legit starting pitcher they developed. The Washington Nationals yeah. have nobody in oh, really? the system. In really? fact, baseball prospectus, which is high, highly respected. Yeah, like the old sporting okay. news. The They have the rankings, top minor league yeah. systems. Coming in at Keep in mind, there's 30 wow. teams in the Major League yeah. Baseball. The Washington Nationals, your world champions, yeah. rank 29th. And the Red Sox right next 27th. to them? 27th. Okay. The Red Sox? Yes. Really? Yes. Um, now, the, the, the well. Nats have pitched a couple young pitchers this year yeah. that we kind of needed to pitch well, and they've uh, been stink bombs. Really? Uh, so it's been bad. Max Scherzer's... 35 or 36 yeah. now, his last year of his contract, and he's earned every nickel. And this he's, is his last year? Or? Well, next year next will year. be. But he's earned every nickel. Right. He's a Hall of Fame pitcher. Yeah. And if, uh, and it's a good 35, contract. That was a great, that was that was great a good contract. Uh, if he falls off the kitchen table, yeah. so be it. We'll eat his last year of his contract. Yeah. But the hope I had in the major leagues did the right thing with a what sixty game schedule. Yeah. They increased the playoffs up to eight teams each league. Wow. There's only fifteen teams in each league. Yeah. So you have a better than fifty percent right. chance. So I said to myself, ha 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 well, we're not as good as the Atlanta Braves. Yeah. Uh, the Braves actually were the Eastern Division champs last year, four games better than that. Is that right? Four but games I, better. But I said but you know we're good enough to take second place. Yeah. Well, that's not looking so good. Yeah. And then so you've got the three divisional winners, the three second place teams, then the remaining two teams with the best record, regardless of what division. Yeah. So, wow. What precipitates a win streak or winning 15 out of 20 games? Yeah. It's good pitching. Okay. And I will say here. Till my last spade of breath of my life, and baseball starts with pitching, ends with pitching. Right. And again, yeah. you look at the Angels signing Rendon; it, it's done them no good. Uh, so we're in trouble. We're in trouble for next year. And at some point here, I will bring the list of uh, pitchers available this winter for the uh, free agency. But I, I yeah. you know, in all honesty, Duke, we're, we're paying. Strasburg, $35 million. Oh. We're paying Scherzer $30 million. Really? Patrick Corbin's <clears throat> getting close to $25 million. Oh. So if we're going to go get a frontline pitcher, yeah. that's minimum another twenty five. So you can't have about $120 million tied up for four players yeah. where the salary cap right now approximately is about 200 Well, they have a soft cap, but you'd end up paying a luxury. And again, you're effectively explaining why Rendon uh, took off. And there was no way they were going to pay him. Afford. They could yeah. To pay him, and Rendon was my favorite player. Loved the guy, uh, but you always go for the pitcher. Yeah. Now, when I think of Steven Strasburg, it's the same way I think of Richard Nixon. 
first thing you think of Nixon. A Duke Law School graduate, okay. of course. When you think of Nixon, you think of Watergate. Yeah. When you, I think of Steven Strasburg, is, and he's won almost twice as many games as he's lost. He's got a really? 3.19 no. ERA. He's no. had a great career. Yeah. But injuries. injuries. He's missed, I remember, one full season with Tommy John, really? and he's had numerous other injuries. So maybe missed roughly, I mean, a quarter or a third of what Yeah, he maybe would. a quarter of his yeah. career, and he's 30, no. 31. That's a lot. Right now. That's a lot. And, you know, here he is with a new seven year contract pitching yeah. till he's what, 38 sorry, what, years. What's he in? What, what did he just undergo? What was he in? Oh, oh Carpal Tunnel. Carpal Tunnel. Yeah, God, that's, so that's weird. His last start, a week and a half ago, he, he threw, I think, 10 pitches, and he's throwing. Wow. Then he's doing that amount, wow. and I wasn't quite sure because I knew wow. he had a hand problem. Yeah. But I did. Now, if you have a lovely secretary saying, geez, I'm going to be out for a while. Yeah. She's in front of the computer eight hours a day. Yeah. Understandable. Now, apparently... David Price had this injury. He was he couple, was, couple he was getting ago. nailed for doing like video games of some okay. particular game but or something. Twenty eighteen, but he actually started thirty games yeah. that year. Yeah, he's uh, had, he's been pretty healthy. Yeah. Um, so um, wow. So um, the future the future may not look so bright for you guys. You huh? are correct, sir. Now. Their Starling Castro, player I've always liked, yeah. played with the Yankees, the Cubbies, the Marlins, really solid player. We signed him at second base, two-year contract, was playing well yeah. on the early part of the year. He He's out for a good portion of the year, and it'll be too late by the time he gets back. So they brought up our last remaining can't-miss prospect. Yeah. Not a pitcher, but second baseman, Luis Garcia. And notably for him, he's 20 years old, and there's a couple 20-year-olds playing right now. But he's the youngest 20-year-old player in baseball, huh. and he's the first player to be born in the millennium oh, yeah. to be oh, in, really? in playing in the major really? leagues. That's and this right. could look, look, looks like a, a can't-miss <clears throat> player. Uh, now, huh. you know, we and, uh, shame on me, but, you know, as good as the Yankees are, and they picked up catcher Rob Brantley from the Giants today. Yeah. But the New York Yankees are currently, and they were losing to Atlanta. They probably lost that game. But as of today, Duke, uh, they're 16-9, and nine, a nice 640 winning percentage. Yeah. But they're a game behind the Tampa Bay Rays. I mean, I, I, I God, couldn't Tampa name Bay. you, you more, probably so more impressed. than three players on the race. And you're three more ahead of me. Yeah, yeah. and I just... So I, impressive. I, I don't know. Now, you know the Yankees' yeah. payroll is probably around 220, yeah. and, and I'm almost willing to bet... Tampa Bay, not, Tampa, even, not, 100, even, 100. not even 100. Yeah, I mean, no. how does Tampa do it? No. And The Red Sox, obviously, having grabbed Hyam Bloom from Tampa, hoping some of his magic, obviously, will rub off on yeah. him down yeah. the road. Yeah, so certainly, I, I think the contract that the Rays have, I think the city of St. Petersburg owns the Tropicana Field yeah. and it's on 2027 huh. and hopefully they can sojourn north to the right. island city of Montreal. Yeah, that Here, would, I know, you're going to shake your head. No, I'm going to say, I don't think it's going to happen, but that would just make yeah so, so much sense. Yeah. yeah. But no, I'm not holding my breath. Yeah, but you know, what kills me and I, like you, we're old folk and we grew up with baseball. We yeah. enjoy baseball. Yeah. And it's a fairly quick ride to Montreal. But, you it know, used now, to be now you know, a semi retired. You know, I've got a fair amount of free time. Yeah. Uh, it'd be, no, you'd, catch, you'd be catching 20 games I'd anyway, probably. probably 20 huh? games, yeah. yeah. You know, once I'd a catch week. a bunch. Boy, yeah. I, I'd look forward to getting back to Montreal. Who, who knows when? I'd be stunned if the border opens before the end of the calendar year. Officially closed now till I think September 21. Yep. I can't imagine that won't yep. keep getting extended. That is my guess, too, is uh, Canada will open up January 1st. Yeah, my kid Ian was asking me, Dad, tell me about Montreal. What do you know about Montreal? I said, I have I have fond memories of the place. Well, you used to, used to go up by it. It's, it's funny, I've neglected Montreal. I made the Jazz Festival probably 15 straight years. Yeah. I haven't been for probably 10 straight years. I've just, uh, the traffic congestion. I hear CJD every day. The city, you know, I don't know what my, in the airport. I hate going to the airport. But anyway, great city. Traffic congestion seems to be its biggest issue, but now, of course, you can't get there. No, going to the airport is yeah. all right 
if you're dropping someone off. You go to the front. Although even there, even I mean, you've been there plenty of times. Thank you. Not to mention plenty of times you're good enough to take uh, Ian and Jennifer there a while back. Just the access to it. I just don't like dealing yeah. with that place. Well, I brought your son and Miss Jennifer out. <sighs> I, where did I pick them up? No, oh, you picked them up at your your house. Remember, I that was when did I, you I drop freaked them out off? because you weren't. I got to your house a little oh, early, right. And you weren't there. And I I'm was free, at the gas station. I'm freaking out in part because I had my buddy Alex right. for an overnight, and I'm going. You guys have got to get to Montreal, right. you, and you said, okay. "What do you think? I'm gonna? You, you didn't count on me. I, no, no. I just freaked you. They, a little. Yeah. I remember the but story. Yeah, at now. your house. It was six o'clock. You were dropping them off. Sounds right. I got. <laughs> I went to the gas station, fell up, yeah. and. And I got back home at 5.55. Right. Oh, yeah, you were right on. Right. I was, yeah. like I said, I was freaking out mainly because yeah. I had my buddy Alex to yeah. deal with. Yeah. yeah. But. Hawk, I can count on you for anything. The funny thing is, and, and again, Montreal congestion fits right. perfectly in a sentence. Yeah. But we went that evening, yeah, no, that no, night. Nobody. And, and. Jennifer can talk. I can talk a lot. Yeah. And your poor kid. <laughs> and I like talking to him, but yeah. he barely got a word in edgewise. Sure, you know? so, I'm sure he understood. So I got to. What's the. the I mean, Champlain. What's the name I, of the I go out to Palm Mercier. When what's, I go to the airport, I go up through New York and jump up. I don't go near the oh, city. I go wherever the GPS. What's the name of the airport? Jean Drapeau? What, what is no, it? Pierre Elliott Pierre, Trudeau. Pierre Elliott Trudeau. Trudeau. So it's easy. Um, you stop, get the hell out of the car, yeah. have a good vacation. Right. Oh, no, it's great when you, because I hate, I hate the parking there. If you're there yeah. to pick somebody up, then yeah. you have to get they, a they have their course garage. of sorry. Yeah, or they have the cell phone area, which, but that's funny. That does me no good, because my cell phone doesn't work north of the border. At least it didn't yeah. used to. But, but, but I'm telling anyway, you, Duke, yeah. I let them off. Drove home. Yeah, might have been eight thirty. I don't remember. So what hopefully time. maybe and a three hour round trip. I have never come back from yeah. Montreal so fast with the lack of traffic yeah. like that. Get yeah. to the border might have been one two cars in front yeah. of me. That's good. Uh, well, thank thank you, Hawk. Yeah. Uh, another thanks for that. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, Jennifer said she knows I hate. It. I said obviously I'll get you up there, but I had a concern with my buddy Alex. So she said at one point she said, Richard, I got someone to take it. Who? I'm not going to tell you. Are, anyway. are, are you doing your November D.C. trip this year? Boy, I mean, D.C., and I mean, I don't think the museums are open at this point. It hasn't even oh, crossed my okay. mind. Okay. I'm just starting to think about New England, at least for living in a nice part of the world, although, of course, you bag your Cape Cod trip. But See, I, love... I was supposed to be in Cape Cod this week. Wow. Yeah, um, I, I know how much you guys love Cape yeah. Cod. Usually a, a fairly traditional trip after an election day. I trust uh, we'll have some election night coverage yeah. here. Um, but a trip I usually take is a long weekend just to hit some coastal places. Uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, I love walking the marginal way in Ogunquit, mm -hmm. Maine. My sister's in Hingham, of course, uh, clam in on the vineyard. And I love ending up in Newport, Middletown, Rhode Island. Another great walking place, Hawk. The famous mansions, the Cliff Walk, one of the most famous walks in the country, probably. Anyway, well, but I'm, I still thinking, remember I'm thinking I'll at least uh, clam in is telling me, you can, you know, the vineyard will be empty after Labor Day, but uh, nothing's planned. I I still remember hanging down, yeah. and I think your mom was still alive when yeah. this happened. So we went to a no, Bruins or a Celtic game, oh, yeah. um, and we went to Hingham. We were headed back to Vermont. We, so yeah. I got up at, at the crack of noon, yeah. okay, <laughs> and you had just gone home. I said, dude, yeah. what, what, what are you doing? Yeah. What, what are you done? And you go, Hawk, I just did a seven-mile hike. Yeah, probably and I'm just World's getting out of bed uh, at noon. Yeah. 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 Anyway, no, so no, D.C., I'm trying to think. I got to my friend Libby lives down there, and my friend Pamela, one of my Duke friends. I think they said some of the museums are slowly, partially okay, I didn't coming know that. back. To, but no, D.C., I mean... And plus the Vermonter. I love, uh, yeah, I mean, I love taking the train back. Vermonter's not coming north of, like, New Haven, Connecticut yeah. now. No, D.C. hasn't crossed my mind, but I, I hope it happens. Yeah. I told my wife that we, we've never done an Amtrak yeah. trip. And I just love trains because well, I'll look out this. the window, I'll read. I love trains. I mean, it's not a, that I'm on a much. I guess. It's a long trip. Correct me if I'm wrong. Could, like, could I go to Montreal? and jump on the train and just cross Canada and end up in Vancouver. Yeah, I mean if you're if you're in just for a scenic good, 
I mean, you're talking about, I'm not sure about with the, in, in, aside from the pandemic, you obviously could do that. Okay. In fact, Ian and Jennifer have done that. They've done the train from, I think, Montreal to, to Vancouver, yeah. maybe. Great train trip. Yeah. At this point, I'm, I don't know what the story yeah. is with the pandemic. Yeah. Well, but I, in normal times, absolutely. Yeah, well, I, I, I should partake in something In fact, my like one that. trip, which I'm sure I've mentioned a million times, my one time to Toronto, it was a Via Rail strike, and it was like half price uh, tickets. So my choice was to go to Toronto or go east to the Gas Bay, okay. which sounded really cool. Problem was a longer trip, and I don't think I had that much time. And I think the train only goes in or out of Montreal every other day, and at least at that time. So I did the easy trip to Toronto, caught a Blue Jays game, okay. um, stayed in a hotel right next to uh, the stadium. But but great great trip. Yeah. But uh, but I love I love yeah. trains. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and despite, but yeah, they're down. I mean, Amtrak has, I guess, limited service, but I don't know what yeah. they're doing. Yeah, despite this virus this summer, yeah. and as we're just days away from September, uh, it's still been a pretty good summer. Yeah, overall. pretty pretty Even hot. The older I get, the uh, or twenty days in the nineties for Burlington, second highest on record. You know, of course, speaking of weather, my I so feel so sad when I went out to the Kingdom yesterday. I don't think forecasters were talking Laura being more than a Category Two, which is max maybe one hundred five, one hundred ten. I come back today in my first report, Category Four, and yeah. it may well strengthen some more. Yeah. You know, the flooding Houston has had in recent years. Oh, this yeah. could be just a nightmare. Um, I it will be. Actually, you just remind me. I've been meaning to ask you um, the term, a great term, the Northeast Kingdom. What is yeah. the genesis of that? Oh, of course, uh, we go back to um, good old, uh, the great uh, senator from Vermont, uh, George, George Aiken, governor and then later senator. I'm not sure it's totally nailed down, but I think circa 1950 or so, so he was just talking about that part of the state and just referred to it as the Northeast Kingdom. Okay. So he's the one credited with the term. Yeah. And can you define, while we're on the kingdom, you want to define what what ten counties or what terrain the kingdom until Sometimes I'll see the, the stretched even into Franklin County. Joe Sherman, my good friend Joe, who's a Montgomery resident and a very good writer, has written some great books. One of the Flyleaf's on a, it's a very good book I'll still look at once in a while, but it makes a reference to him living in Montgomery in Vermont's Northeast Kingdom. No, folks, you're just off by a couple miles, yes. but Montgomery's Franklin County, yes. which is not the Northeast Kingdom. Yeah. It's Orleans, Essex, where my camp is. Caledonia? And Caledonia, very okay. good, those three counties. Yeah. Sometimes I think even Lemoyal, which is yeah. bordering county, but sometimes yeah. they'll stretch the yeah. definition, but, but George Aiken's credited with, yeah. and it's a great term for yeah. the rest. Record. I tried, and in, in many columns, I've thrown in Franklin County as the Northwest Paradise. I do back in your And early I even days. got my good friend Dick Snelling. Dick was up, then governor, and I got, and I think Dick liked me because he didn't have to deal with me much. He had a pretty edgy relationship, as you may recall, with the Montpelier Press Corps. Yep. He would have his tape recorder. If he's being interviewed, he'd have his tape recorder right there. I think he had a grudging respect for some report, but he, he, he dealt with me once every couple months, so he's talking to the Chamber of Commerce, and I happened to interview, talk to him before. I said, Governor, I have a term I like for Franklin County is the Northwest Paradise. Think you could ever mention that? And he did did mention wow. it, but it never, well, uh, never hooked. It never stuck. I'm going to ask you a question. Of course, you were yeah. the longtime news director of 1420 Our AM WWSR. Yeah. Yeah. In your journalist career, yeah. I'm going two sides of the coin. Who is your most favorite politician? Other side, who is your least favorite politician for um, whatever reason? Boy, you're talking, geez, I'm not sure I want to get in. I'm, I'm sure not, I don't think I'm going to throw out a least favorite if he's, I guess I'd have to, let me, can I think well, about that for, uh, sure. I'd have to think about that. I thought you were going to say, who is your most favorite and who who did you respect the most, which might not be the same, because Snelling might well be a quick lance, yeah. the guy I respected most. And I think he was the last governor. He was famous for being a hands-on governor. Yeah. And it's a big job. Even little old Vermont, talking what, $6 billion uh, you know, budget and stuff? We're talking a big job. Tell Phil Scott about that. Yeah. But I, but but Snelling supposedly just kept uh, was a real hands-on guy and had a very good handle on just about everything going on. And that's not necessarily a good thing. You need to delegate mm -hmm. stuff. Um, let me let me sure. let me think about now, that. 
refresh I, I my mean, memory. I love dealing with Howard Dean. I'll tell you, I'll mention this about Howard Dean. I, I would love running into Howard Dean in my radio days. I'd be over playing tennis at Collins Pearly. I mean, once a month or two in winter, I'd run into Dean. He'd be watching one of his kids playing hockey. Yep. And I'd always have my tape recorder. Have a, he, he was great. Yeah. Governor, can I grab you for Yeah, sure. Ask me anything yep. you want. Um, so he just the accessibility. I just make the general comment. I was so lucky being in Vermont. The accessibility, especially back in, in, in maybe easier then than now, but I think it's still yeah. pretty easy. I remember you telling me that yeah. 20, 30. I mean, like, you need to talk to somebody, you can grab Right. Them. You said, Hawk, where, what other state in the country can a guy like me right. just walk up to right. the governor I mean, from of the a state little, from a small game. radio station? Right. I mean, my free press connection probably didn't hurt, or maybe it did hurt in some cases, yeah. but yeah. but the accessibility was really, really nice. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Anyway, but let me, let me think about that. And Dick Snelling. Did not Barbara, his wife, find him in the swimming pool? Did I'm he not, drown well, or was it a heart no, attack? No, he didn't drown. He was found. I think as he he was found. His body was, I think, right next to the swimming oh, pool. Oh, I so thought he didn't was drown. in the pool. Okay. I think I think a heart attack. Heart attack. And yeah. it may well have been Barbara, of course, our lieutenant governor for years, state senator, yeah. also highly respected yeah. lady. Yeah. Um, and of course, Howard Dean goes from. I mean, you know, lieutenant governor. Some people knew him. He was a lieutenant governor, but still, wasn't on the top of everybody's list. And one day. Howard Dean's governor. The point I was going to make, I haven't seen him literally since he was governor, but I feel like when he ran for president, again, he was a front runner for a while mm-hmm. there. Um, and I hear him as a pundit. It doesn't knock me over as a pundit, but anyway, but as governor, I had, it was funny, his, his biggest critics, I think, in Montpelier Hawk in those days were liberal Democrats. I mean, Snelling was a physical, especially the state was in not tough, was in tough times, and Howard Dean just kind of stuck to that, a physical, physically very responsible responsible, socially, way, you know, mm-hmm. more liberal. But once he ran for president, I just, who is, I just feel like I don't even know yeah. this guy. And I've literally never run into him. Yeah. And since. I always told people about mm-hmm. Howard Dean, and there's no such thing as a moderate politician anymore, yeah. but he was At the, the time, he was the yeah. poster child yeah. as a moderate. Like and I said, liberal Democrats were clearly, he got, right. he did much better yeah. with conservative uh, Republicans, I think. You know, I don't know who you are anymore. I mean, that's... Yeah. What happened to, you know, like, he never talked like that while he was in yeah. Vermont. And I, so, again, I can understand some of his feelings, which I won't get do, into, but I've never met him after governorship. Um, we only have about hey, four a little minutes. golf might not hurt. Yeah, okay. Now. Uh, We're down to the top 70 for FedEx Cup. I, I do want to talk, the old timers, yeah. the champion golf tour. The, the, that Phil Mickelson had a great, Phil he had a great, did he, did he win it? He had a great part, first round. Partaked in his, partook in his first yeah. champion's Tour, yeah. which used to be called the Seniors Tour. Yeah. Phil no Mick- and the tour. Seniors only do three days. Yeah. And that concluded today. And Phil Mickelson won his so first win tournament wow. ever, the Charles Schwab Series at Ozarks in Ridgedale, Missouri. Wow. So he finished at 22 under huh. and beat Tim Petrovic, who I've yeah. never heard of, and Kevin Sutherland. And what did they come in at? 18 under well, and 16 so under. Easy now, wow. Phil, yeah, good for Phil. Shot sixty-one on uh, right. Monday. Yeah, the first round. Tell him when he shot his front nine. 20, 27 on is that twenty seven on his front nine, which is which is just what DJ did the other day. DJ had a front yeah. nine at twenty seven on route to his yeah. sixty. So sixty one, sixty four, sixty six. Wow. Now me thinks if Phil Mickelson and yeah. he won't decides to become a senior golfer, he as would. In, I mean, as in a regular, a on regular the, on the yeah. tour, he would just destroy um, everybody. Yeah, probably, but probably. the Although money he is, is funny. He can be a little. The money erratic. isn't that big. What did I, let me guess. I'm guessing he made three to four hundred thousand for winning. That would be my. The total purse was three million dollars. Probably and a, not a, a lot bad of these, guess. About a third of a mil, probably. Yeah. Um, not bad. Yeah. Like uh, the the purse this weekend. The BMW Championship in Olympia Field. In the second round of FedEx. Is, uh, the purse is nine and a half million dollars. No, this is all about for that. money. You but, want, uh, can I give you the quick but, top, top yeah, ten I'll let here? You, but okay. uh, DJ, yeah. Dustin Johnson won oh, last week. What a huge win. And you know TPC the, Boston and, and Norton Mills. The number one golfer in the world now is? I mean, I can give you. Yes. I mean, DJ is a leader in FedEx points. He's the number one golfer okay, ranked. Right. Yep. 
Yeah, the quick top 10 for FedEx points, uh, DJ, Justin Thomas, Webb Simpson. I'm telling you, Webb's a pretty big guy these days. Who won RBC Heritage, the second tourney out. Daniel Berger, very good golfer, number four. Colin Morikawa coming off his huge PGA win. Five, Harris English, who came in second to DJ, who's come back kind of from the dead. Uh, number seven, Bryson DeChambeau. Number eight, Sanjay Im, who doesn't mean too much to me. John Rahm, who was number one in the world Briefly. a couple weeks ago, yep. nine, and Patrick Reed, old friend, Captain America, number 10. Again, DJ, what a talk about destroying the course. 30 under. I never heard of a, a higher score. Yeah. Guess how much he beat Harris English by. Did you catch that? Uh, I don't know. How about by 11 strokes? Wow. In another tourney, Harris English probably would have won it. Now, for the record, that was the biggest margin of victory since Phil Mickelson's 13 stroke victory in the Bell South and Bell South Classic in 2006. Wow. In 11 11 stroke margin. Wow. TJ so just destroyed the place. When is the U.S. Open? U.S. Open, I mean, next, next month, it's uh, right after FedEx. We have FedEx next two weeks. I think they have a week off and then U.S. Open, just about like four weeks away. Maybe four weeks, I'm guessing, from okay. tomorrow. Oh, yeah, not far away. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, the open. That, so we got some good and good golf. I'm trying to get FedEx to go from 70 this week in Chicago um, to to 30 for the for East Lake outside Atlanta. And again, the winner who whoever wins East Lake will win the will win the 15 mil. Now the U.S. Open is what June is is that when they I normally mean, when play? When it usually is usually June was British Open Open Jul- Championship in July. PGA in the old days would have been August. August, which and now FedEx Cup will be the yeah. will be the big August sign. And again. Um, the, You're getting tight on time, oh, I think. Here. With the PGA being moved to May, yeah, that yeah. is such a coup for that yeah, tournament. I tried to put him to number one. Thanks for correcting me and yeah, saying, dude, yeah. you're forgetting the Masters in April. Yeah. Of course, Masters in November this year yeah, yeah. and no so, fans. So that is it. That will conclude this edition of the Best Damn Sports Show in Franklin County. For Alan Richie Cunningham, yeah. Mr. Duke Forrest, I'm the Nighthawk. And as always, remember, folks, you do not have to be a great athlete to be a good sport. See you next week. See you, folks.